All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to get into more React Native type of stuff, okay? So we're going to look at the text input component, which is a foundational component for inputting text into the app via the keyboard. All right, now, what I've done here is I've created another component called Boiler Component, and this is what it looks like. It's just, just that. It's a boilerplate that we can start with, uh, just so we don't have to retype everything. Uh, and it's just something simple to start with. So what we're going to do is copy this. And you should have this in your project files. And then we're going to create a new component to work with. So we'll create a new folder. And let's call this text input component. And we're going to just create a file called same thing text input component dot js and then we'll paste in that boiler component code and then just change the name so text input component we're also going to change it down here All right, and then just to test it out, let's save it and then go to index.android.js. We're going to import it. Make sure it's the right path. And then we're going to put that right there. All right, so let's save that and reload. All right, so now it's showing our text input component. Now I want to show you um, to make this a little quicker. Instead of having to do the the double R to reload, we can actually enable hot reloading so that when we save our file, this will automatically reload. So to do that, you want to just go to the emulator and do a, a Control M. And you can see from here we can also reload, but what we want to do is click Enable Hot Reloading. Alright, so once we do that, if we were to go into our text input component, and let's put an exclamation there and save, you'll see that it, it updated without us having to go over and double click the R key, All right, which makes things a little faster. All right, so what we're going to do is up here where we're importing from React Native, we want to add in text input. And then we're going to go down here in the view, get rid of that, and say text input. Okay, we're going to just add a placeholder. Okay, save that and it should upload, I mean it should reload, there we go. So now we have this input field. Now what I want to do is have uh, a property called value. So let's go ahead and put static default props and we're going to set value, we'll just set it to hello world. And then we're going to pass the props into the constructor and then into super. And then we're going to set a state of value and set that to that prop value. So this dot props dot value. All right. And then down here in the text input, we'll say value e equals this dot state dot value. Save it. And now you can see that hello world is filled in in the text box. So whatever is in this text input is linked to the state value. Now let's say we want to make it so that when we start to change this, it fires off a function and we want to change that state value. So what we can do is add in here, we'll say on change text. And what we want to do is set that going to have a value and we're going to use an arrow function and then we'll say this 
dot on change text and then we're going to pass in that value. All right, so now up here, let's create that function on change text. Okay, and let's see, that's going to take in that value. And then we're just going to change the state. So we'll say this dot set state value. And we want to set that to the value coming in. Now, just to be able to see what the value is somewhere else, let's put a text. We'll put a text component right here. And inside here, let's put in this dot state dot value. All right, we'll save that. And you can see that it says hello world in both places. If I go and I start to delete this, you'll see that the one below it is also going to delete. Okay, it's going to be whatever I type in here. All right, because we're changing the state value and we're outputting that right here as well. Now, there's a whole bunch of um, different events that we could we could put onto this input. So, for instance, if we want to fire off an event when it submits when we click enter then we could add on submit editing okay so if we set on submit editing and let's put e for the event and we'll call a function called this dot on submit editing pass in that event and we'll go up here and say on submit editing. All right, and then let's see what we want to do here. Let's just do a console.log. And we'll say on submit editing called. And then we'll just concatenate that E value. All right, so let's save that. And then if we were to click enter, you'll see down here, it says on submit, on submit editing called, and then it's going to just display that object, that event object. And if we want the actual text that's going in, we can go like this. We can say e dot native event dot text. And I know it, it works a little different than uh, standard React.js. But let's go ahead and save that. And then if we were to click enter now down here, you can see on submit editing called and it gives us whatever was in the text box. All right. And there's other stuff we can do. We can do on blur, for instance. I'll, I'll just copy this and let's say on blur and we'll say E. We'll call a function called on blur. Not blue, but blur. There's also uh, on focus. All right, so if we go up here and we say on blur, why do I keep saying on blue? And we'll just say console.log on blur called. This one will say on focus. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Notice when it hot loads, the text here doesn't change. Uh, if we do the double or if we, we can actually just do open up the menu and click reload. And that'll reload everything, the properties, the state. All right, and now if I click in here, you'll see down here in the console, we get on focus called. If I click outside of it, we'll get on blur called.
actually you know what it's not calling it because it's there's nothing else to click into so what we'll do is let's add another text component so inside index Android JS we'll just copy that so we'll put in two of them and we could actually pass a, a value property into this say test All right, now if we go and I click on test, you'll see on focus called. If I click back up here, on blur is called from this one. And then when we enter this one, on focus is called again. All right, so we can have events for essentially everything that has to do with the input. Okay, submit editing, when the text changes, on blur, on focus, all of that. All right, so before we finish here, I just want to show you a couple other properties that text input has. So we could add a max length if we wanted to. So if we say max length, um, I don't know, 10. Save that. And now if I go up here and I start to type, is that 10? Actually, I think that's 10. So if we go... Yeah, you'll see it's not letting me go any further than that. All right, so you can set a simple max length on your text inputs. Uh, another one we can do is selection color. So when we select it, we can, um, you know, when we select the text, we can change the color of it. So let's say selection color and we'll set that to red. Okay, now you can see that the selection color is red. Uh, we can also do select text on focus. Okay, so if we set that to true, it's false by default. And what that does is when we click in when we click in a text field, it'll automatically highlight. Okay. But that's set to false by default. I'm just going to set it back. Uh, let's see. Another one we have is editable. So for some reason, you may want some of these uh, not, uh, not have the ability to be edited. So let's say editable false. And now you can see we can't go in and change it. All right, and of course, you could set these to properties, these values, and then pass them in here because you may want this one to be um, not editable and this one to be editable. All right, so that's something to think about as well. All right, so that's it for a text input. We're going to go ahead and stop here, and I will see you in the next video.